Congressman Buddy Carter joins me now. He's a member of the House Budget Committee. Congressman, appreciate you being here this evening. Sure. Uh, you know, everybody says the game is rigged and that Washington is never going to change and there's so much inside baseball and they only benefit themselves and they pat their donors on the back. This kind of proves it, no? Well, it does. If you look at it, as you just pointed out, all this money going to the different senators and, and their pet projects. And then you've got two, the two primary authors of this bill. They're not going to be responsible. They're going to be gone. Next year, this time, when all this spending is going on, they're going to be nowhere to be found. They won't be in Congress. They're not going to be responsible for this. We are going to be left holding the bag. Right. We, the citizens of America, are going to be the taxpayers. Yeah, we're going to be the ones left holding the bag. And, and that's, the, that's the thing that gets me, is like, you go look at where these senators are going to be after they give up their seat, after they retire from the Senate. You think they're going to go work? And this happens probably all the time. I mean, look, big government entities and their, their staff, their senior staff, they go work for the companies that they've allocated all these resources go to. Why couldn't they just wait until you, you take over the House in a, a few matter of weeks at this point? Well, and that's what Kevin McCarthy has been advocating for, and I agree with him. That's what should happen. The will of the people, which is a Republican majority, that should have been honored. And, and, and we should have followed that. We should have passed the CR to get us through, you know, the middle of January or at least until we can come up and we be in the Republican majority in the House, we can come up with the omnibus to get us through the end of the year. This is no way to run a railroad, I'm telling you. This is ridiculous that we have, again, two primary authors of this bill who are going to, to be gone next year at this time. And yeah. the people spoke. This is not our fault. This is Democrats' fault. They're the ones who waited until after the midterms in order to get serious about the budget. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who waited until this point, December the 16th, before we had to do something. But, Congressman, one of the things is, is look, I mean, I, 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 there's no question I was super pro-Trump during, uh, you know, both both times he ran for office and when he was in office. One of the things I had a, a problem with was the fiscal policy. And a lot of people are looking at this now, Republicans and Democrats, less Democrats, they like to spend money on all kinds of stuff crazy stuff. But um, they are saying that, like, hey, we voted for different people. We've gotten Republicans. We've gotten Democrats. We've gotten the Tea Party. We've gotten the far left. And it, nothing changes. They just keep writing blank checks with money we don't have. How does it change? Well, first of all, I'm running for chair of the Budget Committee next session. And, and I'm going to tell you, there's, there's going to be a new sheriff in town because we, we have got to get back to regular order. We've got to get back to passing a budget, getting following the guidelines that have been set up, meeting our dates that we're supposed to be meeting. We've got to get back to fiscal responsibility. We've got to get back to balancing our budget. No, it's not going to happen next year. But we can get to that point where we can balance our budget. You know, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. That's the way we've got to do it. We've got to go in there and we've got to attack it. Look, the, the Joe Biden and this administration, they're setting all kind of records, but they are the wrong records. The mm -hmm. highest inflation in a generation, the highest illegal border crossings, uh, the highest debt that we've ever had. This, this fiscal year coming up, the interest on our debt will surpass will surpass defense spending, and it will be the third highest line item in our budget. Mm -hmm. This is intergenerational theft. It's a mugging of the taxpayers. It's got to stop. We've got to practice fiscal responsibility. Yeah, and just to be clear for the viewers out there, our defense budget is around $800 billion with a B dollars a year. Um, so here's an idea, Congressman, and I'd, I'd be anxious to see who votes for this. Putting forward something in a bill, some sort of accountability, because that's the problem, is there's no accountability. People just retire, like we were just talking about, and then they go on, they get out in their squishy jobs. How about something to the effect of, hey, guys, here's the bill. We will pass a balanced budget every year, and if we ever don't balance the budget, every sitting congressman and senator will not be eligible for re-election. Do you think that's something that you could put to a vote and see who goes on the record for it? Absolutely. In fact, I have proposed two bills for, to do just that. The president is supposed to uh, submit his budget by mid-February. He has not done that. In fact, last year was he was, or this past February, was the latest he's ever been. And I've got legislation that will say that the executive branch will be defunded until he gets his, until he gets his budget submitted. Right. And I'm all for no budget, no pay. I'm, I'm all for that. Let's, let's do it. Let's, right. let's, hold their, let's hold our feet to the fire. Look, um, yeah. you know, I, I want to pay check just like anybody else. But yeah, this... if I'm not doing my job, then so be it. Yeah, well, this echoes when Rand Paul put forward something that says you actually have to read the bill before you vote on it. It didn't pass. Uh, <laughs> but th these are the things. 
Uh, you know, if we have another thing that we're addressing here, I was in the military, and I know every year we would take like a ski trip to Lake Tahoe to burn money because if you, if you don't spend it, you lose it for the next year. What about going to a zero budget? Every dime that you want for the following year must be justified. You don't get the same amount plus 2%. Absolutely. And, and that's what we practiced in the state of Georgia when I was there. We, 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 we actually came up with this idea and, 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 uh, and, and tried to put it into action. And, and you, you know, here we, a lot of us, most of us that serve here in Congress served in our state legislatures where we were required to balance a budget. Then we get to Washington, D.C., and all of a sudden we can't balance a budget. What's up with this? And we should be able to balance a budget up here. We've got to, and we were business people. I was a businessman. I'm on business for 32 years. I had to sign the front of a paycheck and I had to balance my budget. You have to do it at home. But when you get to the federal government, when you run out of money, you print more. It's yep. just ridiculous. Well, it is crazy. Congressman Buddy Carter, we love what you have to say here. So uh, keep coming on with us. Thank you.